Today's video asks one really simple question. I don't have the answer to it. You may not know the answer to it, but I do. And it's this, and it's an important one for movie buffs. What do we do before we had Wikipedia and Google and the World Wide Web in general? How did we find out what good movies were and whether a movie was any good at all? What resources did we have to just get information about the stuff we were gonna watch? This is the story of how we found out about movies before the internet and particularly how we found out about them before IMDB. Let's get rid of the phone. Just say you're somebody living before there was an internet. No internet at all, no laptops, no computers, no smart screens, no tablets, no 55 inch OLEDs, nothing. How do we find out? So something comes up on a TV listing how do you find out whether it's going to be any good? How do you find out who's in it? And how do you find out whether it's something that you want to spend your time watching your way through? Now, there were a few resources around, uh, one of which I only found out about fairly recently. But the main go-to was this guy, Leonard Moulton. Now, this is a classic movie guide. It doesn't have all of the movies that were in Leonard Moulton's usual annual movie guides and there were a lot of them that came out every year and they added more recent films to them all the time in pre-internet days they were what you had sitting in your living room so you could look things up now not everybody had them but they were for sale very very widely and if you look around secondhand bookshops you're still going to find some this is the one for classic movies and this is the 2005 edition now interestingly enough it's got 9,000 movies it says here not very many compared to IMDb, but still it was a resource. So basically you open it up, it's all in alphabetical order. You've got ratings there and you've got uh, really brief summaries of what the movie's about, who's in it, sometimes who directed it and whether it's any good. There's a four star rating. So if you're looking at East of Sumatra, you've got Jeff Chandler, Marilyn Maxwell, Anthony Quinn, Suzanne Ball was directed by Bud Bedeker and it gets two and a half stars. That's pretty much it. So, and a, maybe a little bit of a review. And you can look up pretty much any movie in it. There was also something else that was useful. Remember, pre-internet days. There was also a resource at the end where you could look up movie directors and stars. You look up movie directors and movie stars and see what movies they were in. So there's basically just a, a listing in chronological order of what movies people were in. So if you go with Humphrey Bogart, there's a big list of movies here. Don't have all the movies that these people were in, but they just hit the high notes. Like Ernest Borgnine was in a lot more movies than just that and that. But they hit the high notes of classic films that the person was in. So you've got a resource there. It sits on your table. You watch, you look at it, and then you know what classic movies you're going to watch and whether you want to watch them at all. Primitive compared to the IMDb. And it's even more primitive when compared to something like a Netflix or Amazon Prime or Hulu or Apple Plus algorithm, which will try to guess what kind of movies you like, and most often, from my experience, get it wrong. But this was your basic resource. The first thing you went to, if you found out about a movie, you had access to it in some way, and you wanted to find out whether it was worth you spending your time on. So that was the first one. Now, the second one was a guilty pleasure for me, a vulgar pleasure, let's say. A series of movie books which spilled the beans on Hollywood. And they were made by an avant-garde film director turned critic called Kenneth Anger. And they are the Hollywood Babylon series. The legendary underground classic of Hollywood's darkest and best kept secrets. It's got a picture of Jane Mansfield on the front, um, almost wearing a dress. And it's basically full of big pictures and yeah you know, the text isn't extensive but it goes through the history of hollywood and tells you all the scandals involved in this charlie chaplin in court because he was um sleeping with an underage woman there's a whole bunch of other bits and pieces there so it's basically a, a way of um getting information about the scandals in hollywood before we had websites that would tell us these things and Hollywood Babylon was the big one that people really liked. There's the thing about Lana Turner scandal with Johnny Stompanato. So that was a big resource and it was an incredibly popular book. Uh, popular enough that they did a second one 
Kenatanga made a second one and it's got really pretty much the same kind of stuff but in more detail there was a third one done which is a lot more scandalous and a lot more rude and scatological uh, Hollywood Babylon 3 it wasn't made by Kenneth Anger I think it was made after he died and that one is probably the lesser of the three so if you wanted to find out about Hollywood scandals Hollywood Babylon was your Bible now there's another series of books which came out annually and were really interesting because they gave us a little bit more than just the Leonard Bolton books. They gave us the movies that were out in a specific year, mostly in Hollywood, but some foreign language ones as well. Now, I found out about these ones at the Clunes Book Fair. Now, I'm going to put a link to a vlog I did going to the Clunes Book Fair where I found some of these books. I knew nothing about them before, maybe five years ago. And they weren't commonly sold here in Australia. I think you had to send away for them overseas back in pre-internet days to get copies of these books. And they were John Willis's film annual Screen World. This is volume 20 from 1969, which kind of leads me to think that they may have started around 1950. Yeah, you know, they've got pictures of stars on them. You've got Walter Matthau, Julie Andrews, Rod Steiger, um, Barbara Streisand, Omar Sharif. They were hardcover books that came out once a year with everything about the movies, mainstream movies at least, that came out in a specific year. Now they're mostly, there's not a lot of text in them, but they really are interesting because they kind of foreshadow IMDb in some ways. So you've got the book there, you've got it dedicated to his wife. Now they've got the top the things I've got is a dedication, top box office stars of 1968, um, American domestic film releases from January 1st to December 31st, 1968, and they do them in chronological order. Promising personalities, former Academy Award winners, Academy Award winners for 1967, foreign films, biographical data on film actors, event obituaries, and an index. So it's pretty comprehensive. And it basically was a resource that people had if they wanted to find out about a movie made in a particular year. Um, there's the big stars of the time, 1968 releases. It's all in black and white because printing colour was a lot more expensive in those days. And then they start going into specific movies. So you've got How to Save a Marriage and Ruin Your Life with Dean Martin, Nobody's Perfect. And what they do basically is give you a little bit of a cast list. They don't tell you anything about what the movie's about. Is The Power. That's a good one. That's uh, Byron Haskin, produced by George Pell. You should check out The Power if you get a chance to. It gives you um, the production details. It gives you who starred in it. And it gives you some photographs from the movie, which are usually from the press packs that came out at the time. So all of this is a resource that they put together from the information given to them by the studios. And it goes through chronologically through the whole year. There's the Green Berets with John Wayne, Chibasco with Richard Egan and Christopher Jones, which is a little bit of a hidden gem. Um, Uptight. Now, that's a good movie uh, about race relations in America from 1968. So they do that and they then go on to foreign language and foreign films. So they've got five million years to work, which is quite a mess in the pits other name. They go into those, they have little bits of information about those. So they were a resource for these kind of movies. There's a version of War and Peace. And they then go on to, let's go to the back, and they go on to all of the um, obituaries for the year that they have. They're not complete. And they also have biographical details, you know, uh, dates of birth and things like that for a number of movie stars of the time. So, yeah, they're, they're kind of interesting. And I've got a few of them here now. Just let me show you how many of the damn things I've got. Don't have the whole lot. But I picked these up for $5 each at the book fair. And I have two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, nine of them from various years. 74, 73, 72, 68, 1970, 67, 63. 69 and 66 so i've got that many of them and they're kind of a nice little resource to dip into and i was looking through them the other day i was moving things around in the man cave 
And I was looking through them, I thought, yeah, these were the IMDb for the people of the 20th century. These were the resources that movie buffs and people writing about film lived by and made, used to make sure that they were getting their details right when they were writing anything about film or doing it for a television show or a documentary. They were important in that sense. And again, they were the only thing available. So yeah, it's kind of interesting having them. And I like having them too. Most of the time, if I want to find out about a movie, I'll go to IMDb like anybody else will, or Wikipedia. But it's kind of nice to see how people did it before now. And the way that they overcame the limitations of the time and the limitations of data access. Now, it takes a lot longer to look up something in one of these books than it does to just flip through a screen to get to IMDb. But I think they're kind of cool. And I like having them as a part of my library and a part of my resource collection. If the internet ever goes out for any reason, I could still at least find out about movies. So I just thought I'd give you a bit of a look at those. Now the covers are all different, there'll be different stars. It's interesting to see which stars turn up in which particular year in these books, because they do vary a lot as the decades and the years change. But I just thought I'd give you a bit of a look at that and uh, suggest to you that if you get the opportunity and you see this kind of stuff in junk stores or second-hand bookshops or jumble sales or wherever else you find them and you've got the space for them, I suggest that if you're a movie buff, you pick up something like this or anything else like this and you'll find yourself just sitting down in a chair when you need to chill out and get away from some screens and just enjoy the way people who were movie buffs in the previous century enjoyed things. So thank you very much for watching. As usual, wear a mask, follow the science, social distance and wash your hands. And of course, please consider subscribing, liking the video, leave a comment and let me know what you think of this stuff or any other resource books that you'd like me to talk about. And as usual, if you want to, you can become a Patreon supporter to help the channel out by going to patreon.com slash paleo cinema. So that's it this time. Um, look at some good movie books, look at some bad movie books, look at any kind of movie book you get a chance to, and I'll catch you next time. Thank you.